Welcome back to the channel everyone. I am Brian if you're new here and today I'm going to go over another 12 volt 200 amp hour LiPo 4 battery in case you're in the market for one of these guys. So let me start off by saying I'm not necessarily here to sell this to you because I'm not getting any kickback. I'm not getting paid to do this but I have the opportunity to kind of test these things out in case you're looking to buy one of these things. So let me do the testing or some of the testing um, for you. Power Queen sent this battery over to me for, to, to, you know, to look at it, to unbox it, to run it, to do a few tests on it, and give my honest recommendation, and that's exactly what we're going to do here today. So let me tell you, if you really truly want to see like a breakdown of this battery, if you want to see someone saw the top of this thing off, and someone that knows a whole lot more about the internals of this than I do, go check out Will Prouse. He's the, the, the king of lithium iron phosphate batteries and solar stations and things like that. And also, I found a great little small channel that I think this guy deserves a lot more credit than what he currently has. And if you search for Projects in Paradise, this gentleman lives in Hawaii and he runs his complete home living space basically off of solar. And he's got a lot of different batteries. He's got some chins that he runs his main unit right now off of this Power Queen battery. And he's got a ton of great information. And he shows you how he built everything. Um, so I suggest checking him out. He doesn't even know I'm making this video. But I was really impressed by, by what he is putting out right now. And it's helped me out, uh, to be honest, in some of my builds. So if you're free, go check out Projects in Paradise. Great little channel. Back to the Power Queen 200. So this is, again, just another 200 amp hour clone battery there these these things are pretty much kind of all the same to be honest with you but this is from power queen it's a 12.8 volt 200 amp hour battery um, that equates to around 2560 watt hours a lot of you guys might have like the the portable power stations like i do a ton of reviews on um, the biggest one i've got is a 2000 watt hour battery station and it was i believe around 1900 dollars this one comes in at just under $700 right now. I believe it's $689 on Amazon. Um, typically, sometimes there's coupons on this, but you also have to take into account if you buy this battery, you need an inverter, you need a charge controller, you need cables and wires and, and other things. So, you know, you have to fiddle with the math to see if something like this is worth it. Now, the good thing about building a solar generator system off of a battery like this is it's extremely customizable. You can, can tie these batteries together, you can add a larger inverter, you can add a larger solar charge controller, you can put a thousand watts worth of solar into this thing if you have the correct charge controller. So these are a lot more customizable than if you were just to go buy one of those big handheld you know portable battery stations also these are great in rvs you know obviously rvs use a lot of 12 volt dc appliances and lights and fans so these are really popular amongst the rv crowd as well as what i've been really getting into lately is building little solar generator carts using these batteries there's a million and one different uses for these type of batteries and i've got a couple of them and i like to show you guys the options and if i personally think they're any good so back to the power queen again around a 2560 watt hour battery right here but we're going to try to test that to see if it gets anywhere near the rated capacity um one of the first things that i look at when i get these batteries is the instruction manual and this is one of the better instruction manuals that I have received. It's all written in plain English. There's not a whole lot of, in fact, I couldn't find any grammar errors or spelling errors, or I know that's not a big deal, but it proves that they at least hired somebody to proofread this manual and make sure it was up to par before sending it out to us. But it is a very good manual and it shows a lot of good information and I'll take some screenshots and put them up here, but it gives you a bunch of charging parameters, some discharging parameters. It tells you how to hook up multiple batteries. It gives you the state of charge capacity. So when you look at the voltage, you can kind of get an idea of the state of charge of the battery. So keep in mind, like lithium iron phosphate batteries are not like lead acid batteries where you can look at a voltage on a lead acid battery and pretty much know exactly where that battery capacity is. Lithium batteries kind of hover around the same voltage for a very long time until they drastically reduce and burn up all of their, their juice inside. So it's a little bit different game when you're trying to kind of figure out where this battery is at by looking at the voltage. But this gives you a pretty good idea. So you're basically going from 13 and a half volts to 13 volts. That goes from 100% to 30%. So there's not a lot of fluctuation in the voltage on lithium iron phosphate batteries to really dial in where this capacity is. But it gives you a good little graph of where that is. Um, it tells you how to connect in series, how to connect in parallel, um, and some tips if the battery's not working right. Um, overall, just a 
again, I know instruction manuals don't really matter, but this tells me that this Power Queen company at least tried to make sure that their, that their written instruction manual is at least written properly. Now, this power station comes with a five-year warranty as well. That's, I'm not gonna say standard, but five years from the date of purchase for this, you're covered by a full warranty on this battery. So that's a pretty good peace of mind to have. If you spend the 700 bones on this, you get five years worth of warranty out of it. So the max continuous charge voltage on this thing is 200 amps and the continuous discharge is rated at 200 amps as well. So it'll, it'll cover up to 200 amps. So this does have a BMS in it and I'll go over that in a little bit more detail here in just a little bit, but it does not have a low temp charging disconnect. So this battery will charge itself if, if it's below freezing, which will greatly damage this thing and, and you do not want to charge LiPo 4 batteries below freezing. So if you do live up north and it gets below freezing in the winter time and you hook this thing up to a charger and the, the internal batteries in here are below freezing, it will try to charge itself. And if you do that, it's going to damage these batteries. You never want to charge a LiPo 4 battery or below freezing. And unfortunately, this doesn't have that low temp charging disconnect feature, but a lot of these batteries don't. Um, you have to spend a lot more money for batteries that have that low temp charging disconnect switch. So just keep in mind, if you do get this and you're in a cold environment, make sure that you're not charging this thing if it gets below 32 degrees Fahrenheit because you will damage the battery if you try to charge it below freezing. Again, it's a 200 amp BMS and that BMS, again, just think of it as a brain inside this little battery unit that's gonna help you not do stupid things to it. So it's got overcharge protection, over discharge protection, over circuit protection, over heat protection. It's got stuff built in to it to, to help you not break the battery if you do dumb things to it essentially so that's not new to this battery a lot of the batteries are the same they actually use the same bms in a lot of these batteries so if you're used to the redotos or the chins or or those type of lipo 4 batteries 98 percent guarantee that it's got the same bms in it so we know that those work will prouse has looked at a lot of them they work so Again, I'm not gonna tear this top off to look at it. I'll let Will do that. So you pretty much know that the Power Queens is gonna work the same as 10 other batteries that come off that same production line. I got a new toy and we're gonna test out the capacity as best as I can using my fancy new capacity tester. So I can't get up to the 250-ish watts that I need to test this to the 0.2C rating, I guess, but I'm gonna get as close as I can and we're gonna see how many amp hours and watt hours I can pull off of this battery using this tester. Now this is completely topped off. I promise I just disconnected my Victron charger off of this thing. It's, it took two days because it's only a five amp charger, but it is fully topped off. Um, I probably could squeeze in one or two more amp hours if I connected it and pushed it to its limit. But for all intents and purposes, the way that I would use a battery and the way that most of you folks would use this battery, this is a full battery. Okay, so let me go over the setup. So I've got my capacity tester here. So everything's plugged up to the battery. The tester is reading 13.3 volts. And we're just gonna slowly start to crank this thing up to get it running at a constant wattage as high as we can get it. Okay, so I'm gonna slowly start to turn this thing up past the five amps. Yeah, and I can only go to 152 watts on this thing. So let's go up as high as we can. I'm just using the fine adjust knob here. And I'm at 149.4 watts. Okay, so let's keep this thing set up just the way it is. And we're gonna come back and calculate how many watt hours and amp hours I'm getting off of this unit. And we'll go from there. All right, gang, so that little test proved that this Power Queen battery is pretty much right on the nose of its rated capacity. So that test showed after running for 16 hours and 55 minutes at a 150 watt load, I was able to pull out of this battery 195 amp hours. It's rated for 200, but you have to keep in mind that battery might not have been 100% topped off. That capacity meter tester that I have might not be 100% accurate. So I'm gonna go ahead and say 195 amp hours on that meter 
versus the 200 amp hours off this battery is pretty much a wash. I'm gonna call that good in my opinion because there's a lot of variables that could have gone into play with that one. And I was also able to get 2,457 watt hours out of this. And this thing is rated for 2,560, 100 watt hours short, which kind of coincides with 195 amp hours that I was able to get. Now, granted, I'm not gonna cut this battery open and do what Will Prouse does because I don't wanna ruin my battery. But if you really, really wanna get into that, go check out one of Will's videos. I'm pretty sure he cuts one of these things open and looks at it. I'm gonna test out this Alpha 1500 watt pure sine wave inverter. And I'm gonna hook it up to this battery and I'm gonna run a couple of loads off of it. But these little inverters get, get pretty good reviews and the Projects in Paradise guy that I told you about actually uses one of these. Let's go ahead and say it, if he uses it, it must be pretty good because he truly relies on these things to power his home. But I'm gonna hook this up to the battery in a very, very simple way. So I'm just gonna use some four gauge wire that I had laying around that's already got the lugs installed on it. Now, I'm not going to install an inline fuse because I don't wanna cut the power cable. However, I do recommend if you're actually gonna run this to actually use it, put an inline fuse or a circuit breaker between your battery and your inverter on the positive side, just for safety reasons. But for this test, I think I'm gonna be okay. I just, I don't wanna cut the cable. To hook up the inverter, so this inverter comes with kind of uh, thumb screws and we're gonna take the washer and lock washer off, put the lug on, I'm gonna put the washer back on and then the lock washer and then tighten down the thumb screw. And the same for the negative side. Okay, get those nice and tight. Positive and negative are connected. Okay, now for the negative, it's, it's a possibility that you might get a little bit of a spark when you touch the negative to the negative post. So to help kind of alleviate that, you can use either a resistor that you can buy for like five bucks or you could graphite works too. So if you just touch the lug on the cable to the post on the battery with graphite or lead, the graphite in the lead, it kind of charges up the capacitors in the, in the inverter, it helps to eliminate some sparking. So let that sit for just a little bit. Okay, now I should not have a spark and we don't. Get that lug tightened down, nice and tight. All right, so everything's set up. Let's give this inverter a go. Nothing's on right now, obviously. We'll hit the power. And she beeps, and she's reading 13.6 volts. Now I'm gonna be using a little kind of of a watt meter, not, not a kilowatt, but basically the same type thing. And we're gonna plug it into the inverter. Okay, so let's start this test. I'm gonna start it off on low with the, with the big old heat gun. And just to kind of slowly get this thing started, we're pulling a mass of 46 watts. This is on low and basically on cool. So I'm gonna crank it up to the high heat setting on low mode. And it's slowly going up. Inverter's doing fine, fan's not kicking in. Okay, I am all the way up to high mode on my heat gun and we're pulling 640 watts. Let's check the voltage. Still going at 117.5 volts and still pulling 641 watts. Now we're going into high. Eight hundred, nine hundred, almost over a thousand, twelve hundred and twelve watts. We're down to one hundred and ten volts. Fans not on the inverter yet. And we're pulling ten amps. This is really just a test. It's not a test on the battery because the inverter is going to be the limiting factor. All right, so we're still going at 1,210 watts and I hate these tests because that's hot and it's 100 degrees outside. So I'm gonna cut this off. Inverter is, the fan is running now, which is understandable. It's a 1,500 watt inverter pulling 1,200 watts continuously. So that's, that should be pretty normal. Ah, fan, that's more like it. <laughs> No whines, no high pitch noises coming out of the inverter or the appliance. Battery seems to be doing just fine with it. And also, if you're interested, this inverter does have some USB outputs, a 2.1, two 2.1 amp USB-A's on it if you need to charge up a phone. Anything that uses, you know, USB-A charging ports, you can plug those up to right there and charge up a device. 
Well, folks, that's it for the Power Queen and the Alpha 1500 watt inverter. They both work. I don't want to tear these apart because I want to actually use them, but um, from my little testing, my unscientific testing, they seem to work just fine. Again, this pretty much gets the exact rated capacity that Power Queen claims. And that's what I think these setups are perfect for is a little 1500 watt inverter. You can run a little 12 volt fan or an AC fan. You know, it's pulling around 30 watts right now. Something like this in an emergency where you can plug in a fan, you can plug in some lights, charge your phone, uh, run a TV, a router, a modem. With this being pure sine wave, you can do that. Um, I wanted to test out the battery, make sure that the capacity was what the manufacturer stated, which it was very, very close. The Alpha 1500 watt inverter is doing its job. The fans cut on when it got a little warm running 1200 watts. Again, 1500 watt max on this thing. So it's running a fan. So I think this is a good setup if you're trying to get in, you know, kind of into the start of it. So this is on sale right now. Today is August the 20th, 2022. It is going for $729 with a 5% off coupon code. You're essentially paying 28 cents a watt hour, which is pretty standard, pretty average. But again, take that 5% off and you're, you're, you know, you're paying even less than that. Worst case scenario right now, it's 28 cents a watt hour on this. Now you do have to buy an inverter. You got to buy some cables, maybe some fuses, throw in a solar panel to the mix. And then you get into the argument of, well, why don't I just buy like a Jackery? Um, you can, but this is very customizable and you can always double, triple, quadruple your battery capacity. You can increase your inverter size. You can do a lot of configuration to the setup to suit your own needs. Where if you buy a Jackery 1000, you've got a 1000 watt power station. That's it. You can't grow it. You can't minimize it. That's all it is. But something like this, you want to build your own system, you can do that. And it's very easy to link extra batteries. It's extremely easy to upgrade your inverter to a bigger inverter. You can add Bluetooth. You can add a solar charge controller to it if you want to use a charger, if you want to do solar. Um, that's why these systems are, I don't really like to compare them to a standalone power station because they're really for kind of two totally different types of situations, right? Customizable, build it how you want it, spend the money as you get it, as you go, you can kind of grow the system. With a power station, you buy it and that's all there is. Now, yes, you can buy a couple of power stations that have the expansion batteries and whatnot. Those are kind of outliers, but all in all, customizable, power stations, not customizable. That's it for this video on the Power Queen 12.8200 amp hour and the Alpha 1500 watt inverter. They work as advertised, pure sign, capacity met what it stated to meet. So I'm pretty happy with both of them, guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, I'm, I'll be the first to admit I'm not, a, I'm not the professional source for this type of stuff. Again, Will Prowse, Hobotech, Projects in Paradise, all those folks are really good channels to go look at if you really want to learn a whole lot more about these. But this is an average everyday Joe, this guy right here, using a battery to power a fan or whatever. It can be done, it's very easy. Uh, folks, until next time, take care and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching.